In order to understand how an ANOVA works, we have to think a little bit about how variation within a data set comes from different components of that data. If we have an experiment like the cockroach experiment that I described, we can think of the variation among all the observations of the experiment as coming from two different sources. On the one hand, we have variance among the groups. That would be how much variation is there between the means of the red, green, and blue light responses. But we also have some variation that is within the groups itself. How much does one measurement of red light differ from a, a separate measurement of red light? The variance within a group is what you would measure for a single level. For example, if we, if we took all the red values and measured its variance, then took all the blue values and measured its variance, and so on. The variance among the groups would be zero if all the groups were the same. If the average response to red and the average response to blue and the average response to green all had the same means, then the variance among groups would be zero. So if those groups behave differently, then the variance among the groups would be greater than zero. However, we can also expect that there's going to be some variation among the groups due to chance. And so in order to determine whether the groups are significantly different from each other, then we need to know how much does the variation among the groups compare to the variation within the groups. If the data within the groups is really noisy, then the variation among the groups is going to have to be pretty big in order for us to detect the differences. However, if the data that we have for red light falls within a very narrow range and for blue light falls within a very narrow range, but the difference between red and blue is large, then it's going to be easy for us to see the difference between those different colors of light. The ANOVA uses a statistic that is called F. And the F statistic is a ratio that compares the among group variance to the within group variance. When you carry out an ANOVA, the result is this rather complicated sort of table, which we call an ANOVA table. So let's break this down and see how the ANOVA table tells us how to assess these differences that I just talked about. The first row of the ANOVA table here is the summary of the among group variance or among level variance. And the second line is the within group variance. There are a number of columns in this table. The first one, which is DF, stands for degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom is related to the size of these two sources of variance. The, the number of degrees of freedom for the colors is one less than the number of colors. So if there's three colors, the degrees of freedom will be two. The degrees of freedom for the within variance is the total number of measurements that we made minus one. So both of these numbers are related to the size of the experiment. This uh, deviation from the variance uh, is a number which we call the sum of squares. We won't go into the details of how that's arrived other than to say that it gets bigger when the variation gets bigger. So if the variation among means is larger, the sum of squares will be larger if the variation within the groups is larger, then the sum of squares for the within group will also be larger. We then take these two numbers and come up with another number called the mean square. The way that we get the mean square is to take the sum of squares and divide by the number of degrees of freedom. So 857 divided by 2 gives us this number. 1996.4 divided by 69 gives us this number. So this is basically a normalized sort of way of assessing the variation that comes from these two different sources. And so what we want to know is how does the variation among the groups compare to the variation within the groups? If the variation among the groups 
is about the same size as the variation within the groups, then that variation among the groups is pretty meaningless. But if the variation among the groups is large compared to the variation within the groups, as we see here, then the differences among the colors is meaningful. So we can take this mean squared for the among variation, divide by the mean square of the within variation, and that's where this f value comes from. The f value it does not have any sort of simple way to relate it to the p-value. It has to do with a particular distribution called the F distribution. But fortunately, R will just figure this out for us. But we can say that there is a general relationship between F and the p-value. The bigger the F value is, that is, the more different the variation among groups is compared to the variation within the groups then the smaller p is going to get. So this is a general pattern that we see with statistics like t or chi-square or anything. The bigger the value is, the more different things are, and the smaller p gets. So there's an inverse relationship between the f value and the p value. So if we think about these different things that feed into the f value and subsequently into the p value, we can think about how they affect the power and uh, discrimination ability of the test. If we are interested in trying to get a big F value, then we want the denominator of F, which is the mean squared within, to be as small as possible. The smaller it is, the bigger F is going to be. And there's two ways to make that small. One is to make the variation within the group small. Another is to increase the sample size and take more measurements. Either of these makes the ability of the test to discriminate better. The other thing that feeds into it, of course, is the numerator. If we want to have a bigger F value, then we want to have more variation due to the factors we're investigating. And we also want to have a less complicated experiment. The more complicated the experiment is, it becomes then harder to detect the differences. So if we have 10 categories, it is harder to get a significant result than if we only have three different categories. So the complexity of the experiment, how much variation there is within the groups or between the groups, and the sample size are all things that influence the size of F and therefore the value of P.